In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, the most beautiful. When we talk about Islam as the religion of love, we must first understand what love means. You see, love is the opposite of hatred. Love means that I will hurt myself for you. On the other hand, hatred means I will hurt you for myself. When man was created, the first thing that happened was Allah, the one God, blew ruh or soul into Adam al Islam. This soul came from Allah directly Himself. You see, man is made of atoms, material beings. But as soon as this ruh came inside man, Allah commanded everyone to bow, except shaitan. Shaitan said, I will not bow to him. And we believe that is the day our test began. So what was it that Allah wanted to test? Allah wanted to prove to the people it is not about me, it is not about my rank, it is not about my position, it is about you, O oh Allah. And that is the test of man. How far can man go in the love of Allah? To understand love, we must first understand it in our common daily perspective, what love is. What are some of the things we love every day? Don't we all love money? Don't we all chase money? Don't we see the beauty in money? Money is powerful. It's like a genie. It can make your wishes come true. It can make you, if you wish for a car, you have it. You, have, you, ha you wish for a house, you have it. You want the most tastiest food in the world, you have it. Just make a wish. We all are running after money because it has some, some attraction in it. At the same time, we love Women, for example, that's another thing that we find in everyday examples, this, the thing that people absolutely just love. Everybody knows the difference between beauty and ugliness. You bring a child and you put a scary mask in front of him, the child will start crying. He was just born, but he knows it is ugly. But you bring a beautiful face in front of him, a comforting face, like a face of a mother. The child starts giggling, he starts laughing. You see, even a child knows the difference between beauty and ugly. Similarly, men, when they grow up, are still able to see what is beautiful and what is ugly. And we are every day getting killed or being killed for a woman. We are every day doing that for money. So you see, love is defined by this fundamental characteristic. It is something for which you are willing to give your time, willing to give your effort, your energy, and even your life. I mean, how many times we see people are ready to get killed or kill to rob a bank? We see it every day. How many times we hear a man slit his wrist or jumped from a building or drank poison because he couldn't find the girl he loved? But see, the problem is, we see these beautiful things around us and we chase after it like a bull and we compete with each other. But what happens when we get it? What happens when we get it? A wo the woman that you were willing to kill or be killed for, suddenly when you're married to her, you have family problems, you have fights. The money that you chased all your life, you wanted to be successful, once you have it, what happens? I don't know what to do now. Right? People who are famous, they're, they're using drugs to find happiness in their life. Hey, you wanted to be famous. Isn't that the purpose of our life? Isn't that what we're all chasing? So what is it all about then? What are we doing over here? You see, Islam explains to you that I did, Allah says in the Quran, I did not create men and jinn except to worship me. You see? The entire Islam is defined in one word, worship. 
So what does that, what does that word worship mean? We must really ask. Don't we have a bunch of rules in Islam? Don't do this, don't do that, do this, do that. But Allah is saying, I only created you to worship me. And what are the five pillars of Islam? You need to ask yourself. Isn't the entire of Islam dependent on these five pillars? Shahada, Salah, Zakah, Som, and Hajj. But wait, it was all about worship. He said, I only created you to worship me. Just one reason, but we have five. Is that connected somehow? You see, if you want to understand what worship means, you must understand what love means. Let's take this example of women and men falling in love with each other. It's the best example to understand love. What's the first thing that happens when a man falls in love with a woman? You know, the first thing that he does is he makes a statement in his thought. I love this woman. She's beautiful. He might actually go and say it to her verbally, but it doesn't matter. You say it in your heart, you say it with your tongue, you've said it. That is quite similar to shahada. You see, Allah is saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Allah is telling us to say it. There is no God worthy of worship except me. But how do you worship Allah? As Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam worshipped him. The way he showed us the way of worship. Okay, so the first thing that happens is you make a commitment, you make a statement, that's the beginning. The second thing that happens when a man loves a woman is that he starts losing his thoughts. He might be sitting in the middle of a gathering and you know, there might be friends talking and everything going on and, and he'll be just thinking about that girl. Like, wow, you know, her hair, the way she smiled. You know, your thoughts are absorbed, they're gone. You do not control them. It is a beauty that was so powerful that just struck your heart and you are not in control anymore. Even if you want to avoid that feeling, even if you want to you know, look at the world and, be, and smile, you can't do that. Your thoughts are gone. You're, you're able to sacrifice your nights after nights and your sleeps and you're writing poetry about her. Well, isn't that what Salah is? Salah is basically remembering Allah five times a day. It makes you leave your sleep. There is no way you can pray the Fajr prayer without disturbing your sleep. There is no way. Allah is asking you to give me your thoughts five times a day. It is me you think about. The second thing, uh, the next thing that happens in, in a love is that the person who loves the woman he starts giving her expensive and precious gifts. He starts sacrificing his wealth on her. Money is no matter. I don't know what she likes. I'll buy her gold, I'll buy her diamond. I don't know what will make her happy. So you see, Allah is saying, give me your wealth as well, by the way. You know, give me your wealth, give me zakat. And how do we give it? We don't just, you know, burn it and we say this is for Allah. We give it to people so that it can help other people who have Allah's soul, the soul that Allah blew into Adam, the other people who have that soul in it, we give it to them so that they can thank Allah, they can understand that there is still love in this world, not hatred. The next thing that happens is that a man will be happy with being hungry. He does not want to eat anymore. You know, people will be like, hey, I got some food for you. I don't want to eat, man. I don't know, something is inside me, I can't eat. I don't like food anymore. Okay? So Allah is saying, you need to fast. You need to give me your food. You have to be hungry for me. That's the only time when that feeling works. The last thing that happens between a man and a woman is that they decide to leave everything in this world behind leave their family, leave their business, leave their brothers, their parents, everything, and just run away with each other. Isn't that what Hajj is? Hajj is saying, at least once in your life, leave everything for me and just come. Just come for me. You see, back in the days, Hajj was not, you know, flying in an airplane, in an air conditioner. And you know, you land, you have a beautiful hotel ready for you and you have you know, people taking your luggage. No, Hajj 
was walking thousands and thousands of miles back in the days. You had to travel in the sun. That was Hajj. I'm coming for you, Allah. Okay, so Islam is basically made into rules these days. It's just a bunch of rules. All the Muslims do is, okay, I prayed, I, I did my Hajj, I did my, uh, my Psalm, I did my Zakat. Oh, I'm going, to, I'm going to Jannah. But never in their prayer was their, was their thoughts towards Allah. Never in their Zakat, they were really trying to sacrifice their wealth, the love of the wealth. All they were thinking is like, look, people are watching. You know, people think I'm good. It's all about me again. You see, we have made Islam into a rule book. It's not. It's a, it's, a, it's a religion about love. And love seeks sacrifice. We can understand this concept by the example of Ibrahim salam. You see, Ibrahim salam was the friend of Allah. And he, to earn that title, had to go through a test that Allah did not put any other men through that test. Ibrahim salam was given a son at an old age, a son which was so precious that Ibrahim salam asked him, I am seeing in my dream that I'm killing you. He says, Father, do as you wish. I am okay. You see, a son like that is, is very close to your heart. It's easy to go kill yourself, but you are not willing to hurt someone who you love. But Allah said no. The dream came again and again. Allah said, no, I need this sacrifice. Because he wanted to see, is, is the love of son above me, or is my love above all other loves? May Allah never put us through that test, but he was put through that test. And shaitan came in his way three times on the way. What are you doing? Are you crazy? What is going on? And three times he tried to stop him. You know, that is why we celebrate Eid al-Adha every year. Because it is a remembrance of a test that our father Ibrahim salam succeeded in. He proved that Allah, I love you, and for you, everything is gone. Nothing exists. Okay? But shaitan said, no Allah, I don't love you. I love myself, I, I need my rank. Okay? So the religion of Islam is different. It's telling you a very different story. We need to step out of the perspective. Okay, the other thing that people always bring up is Islam is a terrorist religion. It teaches us to kill or be killed. It teaches us to make everybody Muslim. They're all kafir. No, Islam says very clearly in the, in the Quran, لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ deen. To you, your religion. To me, my religion. You don't mess with me, I will not mess with you. But if you come around and tell us what to believe in, and you force us to believe something, then I am supposed to do what Ibrahim did, what he did. He broke the idols. He said, these are wrong idols. I don't worship them. He spoke up against the community, and he was alone, and they were all together. And he was right, and they were wrong. He was thrown into the fire, and then the miracles happened. When you stand up for Allah, when you truly see his light, when you truly see that in the fragrance of the flower, in the flavors of the fruits, in the tunes of the music, there is nur of Allah. In the beauty of the woman, there is reflection of Allah's nur. When you see that it is all Allah's nur, and when you eat these things or when you enjoy these things, you say, SubhanAllah, you're still connecting yourself to Allah through these images. And you don't become a fool and you chase after these reflections and this mirage thinking this is it or this is my purpose of life. You must realize these are reflection of Allah's nur. You can only see it. The minute you try to touch it, it becomes into dust. And you realize you can never touch it. The more you chase money. You know, what happens after marriage? In, in, a, in a woman's life, when you have a marriage between a very beautiful woman and a man who loved her, you know, we start fighting the next day. You see, the beauty is just in, in its appearance. The minute you go close to it, you, real, you realize it's just material. That beauty belongs to Allah. And Allah says, don't give your heart to anything else except me. It is my right. Islam does not tell you to be extreme. It does not tell you to be hungry all day. It does not tell you to sacrifice food, uh, you know, it, it says your heart should be towards Allah. It belongs to Allah. Love and worship 
Worship is a better word than love because worship includes love and it includes respect for Allah and, and a perspective that I am a slave and he's the God. Worship is a better word. So you see, worship is the right of Allah. Don't give it to anyone else. Because Allah says, I will forgive every single sin that you do, but I will not forgive this one. This is my right. I created you. You are my creation. I am the most beautiful. Who are you chasing? Where are you going? It says in the Quran, where are you going? So please, don't think that this religion is backwards. This religion speaks about the reality of this world. What are you people doing over there? Aren't you chasing after something that you love? And we say, Allah is the one that is the most beautiful. And He is the only one deserving of love. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.